Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. We are here week one of college football. Get excited. Get so excited. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Kyle, I don't want to waste any time. We are picking six games against the spread today. Um, I might release this one a little bit early. We normally release these shows on a Friday, but we're picking two Thursday games. Uh, know that we are recording this on Tuesday. So in case this doesn't get released on Friday and we're about to and we're about to uh, predict two games that have already happened. If we release this on a Friday, know that we we're, we're living in the 29th. We're living in Tuesday. But I wasn't going to not pick these two games. But hey, I just might release it a tad bit early. How about that? How about that? How about that? So let's get jump into it. We got six games Nebraska here. Nebraska we'll... mini on Thursday. Yes, yes, it is. Yes, it is. And that is actually game one we are going to talk about. Nebraska and Minnesota. Jared's lovely golden gophers. No, stop that. I don't, I don't. We all, we all know you love, you love the golden gophers. I Jared. do not. I do not. I, I, I love, all know I love, I, mean, I love Goldie Gopher. I, I believe Goldie Gopher um, is a uh, S tier mascot. I mean, I say this though, F tier color combo. That's true. Yes. <laughs> yeah. A tier mascot, F tier color combo. Nebraska clean. Mm -hmm. It's red. It's white. Uniforms are simplistic and classic. We're talking uniforms right now. That's what we're doing. I said, Kyle, let's not screw around. Now I'm screwing around because it's what we do here. Uh, but that being said, their big Husker mascot, the one that's the little kid, but he's a little kid, but he's also like seven feet tall. And I think he's inflatable and I hate it. He's like big boy. He does. He looks like Frisch's big boy. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, so Thursday kickoff. I can't wait Fox. to see Matt rule bomb. I think Matt rule will do fine in, in Nebraska. Yeah. I don't think Thursday that's going to be this season, though. So, so this game is Thursday on Fox at 8 p.m. And when we locked in our pickums here, Minnesota is a seven and a half point favorite, Jared. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not feeling Minnesota here to cover that seven and a half. I think it'll be much closer here in week one here. So I'll, I'll pick Nebraska to cover in a very close game. I'm going to pick Minnesota to win and cover. Um, I think Nebraska will make strides this season. I think they'll be um, decent, at least decent next year. Uh, but as far as week one of this season goes, they're just not it yet. And they have some bad talent deficiencies, especially in the trenches. Like Nebraska's offensive and defensive lines are not great. Minnesota's offensive and defensive lines are actually pretty good. Um, and Kyle, we were talking just last episode about like, how does the new clock, how do the new clock rules affect a football game? This. Yep. Minnesota has the opportunity to, you know, totally own the time of possession in this football game. Um, I like Minnesota to win and cover. Hmm. Yeah. A lot more, a lot more faith than, uh, than what I have for Minnesota, especially. I especially might, it's more um, of a lack of faith in Nebraska. If we're being, especially clear. with Abraham leaving last year, like who, who does Minnesota have this year? A, a real decent, real decent lines. This is a line matchup, Kyle. This I am. You, you can talk about the skill positions all you want. I'm making this pick based off of straight up Minnesota's offensive and defensive lines being vastly superior to Nebraska's offensive and defensive lines. Fair enough. All right. Uh, Woody in our Discord is our guest picker this week here, and he's going to pick alongside with us here. And he has here for the Nebraska and Minnesota game. Uh, take the Huskers and the points. 
Uh, Minnesota will win, but without their star running back and a new QB, former Georgia Tech quarterback Sims won't be much better through the air, but has wheels. Don't look for a lot of scoring on this win- windy Thursday night game unless the defenses do it. He has a final score of 24 to 17. That is a big 10 score right there. And by the way, I, I think he's in the ballpark. I, I mean, I, I, I'm picking Minnesota to cover, but like 28, 14 or 28, 17, 24 to 10. Like, I, I feel like he's in the correct area of what this final score ends up being. I totally agree. Yeah. You know, for the most part. Right. So the other game that's happening Thursday night here on ESPN, same time, 8 p.m., Florida and Utah. Uh, Utah had a chance to beat Florida last year and did not, should have, but did not. Well, they have the chance to, to redeem themselves this year. Uh, Utah is a six-and-a-half-point favor in this game, Jared. And I'm going to ask you, Jared, why is it only six and a half points? Because SEC. I, I, okay. Whether that be perception or reality, we'll find out. Right? We'll find yeah. out. So it's kind of hinted that that's that's my pick here. I got I got the Utes, the original U to cover in this game. Yeah. Um I I agree. I, I think Utah is a very good team this year. They're not, they're not playoff good. I don't think they're not, they're not in my opinion, win the pack 12 good, but I just, I don't like Florida this year at all. Um, he's, he, he's graduated Kyle. He's, he's, he's passed it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you. Oh, I called that. Austin straight up says, who cares? He's got his degree. He's out. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm picking Utah. By the way, I just I I totally called Austin's that that's I've already won. All right. Well let's won. let's hear let's hear what uh well who who do you got? Did you Utah winning cover? One? All right. Woody here. I'm taking the home team, the Utes for with six and a half. With or with or without quarterback rising, quarterback the backup is no slouch. Buckeye fans will recall the Rose Bowl, and Florida's defense on of backfield will be shredded. And the offense, um, the offense rely on a guy called Mertz. Enough said. Utes cover thirty one to twenty. Yeah, that's a yeah, <laughs> that's a good call. Like, I didn't oh, right. forget about Mertz, but man, I was so high on Mertz when he first came out of high school. Yeah. 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 We're just going to move on to the next game here. Uh, Boise State and future Big Ten team Washington. The going at it. Mm-hmm. I'm just, going Washington at- feels super Big Ten to me for whatever reason. Yeah. This Saturday, 3.30 ABC, uh, Washington is a 14 and a half point favorite in Jared. Yep. That is not enough because our favorite Discord fan favorite quarterback is going to run up the score in this game and it will not be close. Yeah, I got Washington to cover. Penix is going to run it up. Uh, he's a real hard nosed player. Um won't be slouching in this game at all. Um, he he knows how to rise to the occasion. Watch out. He's coming. Well said, Jared. Well said. All right. And Woody here. I want to pick the underdog in 14 and a half, but the weather is going to be great for Penix and his fleet of returning playmakers should run wild. The D front on the Huskies look to be the best in the Pac-12 the pack four uh so they should get plenty of pressure and cause havoc in that bronco backfield huskies start their run towards the pack 12 title this saturday 42 to 23 
I I think uh, Boise's still riding off of. It's not it, that number is not anywhere big enough. I think Boise is still cashing in on stuff they did a long time ago at this point, as far as their was that back in credibility is concerned. Was that? was that 2008? I mean, they had several good years, but it's just those several good years are in the past at this point. Yep. All right. Uh, next up here, we have the Battle of the Carolinas, North Carolina and South Carolina, 730 on ABC. I don't know this South Carolina team, and I don't really don't know this North Carolina team either. <laughs> but I do know Jared. When in doubt, you pick the quarterback. That's right. And so sir. I'm going to, and I'm going to pick UNC here. And two and a half points is pretty much a pick 'em here. So I'll go. I'll go with the Tar Heels in this game. And, this, and, and 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 by the way, it's 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 a neutral field. Essentially, it's neutral field um, in Charlotte here. But it will still be heavy North Carolina uh, favored fans in that stadium. But yeah, hey, I'll, p- I'll pick the Tar Heels to cover. One, I co sign everything you said, amendment to something you said. I hate neutral site games. Best thing about college football is the atmosphere. Why, why, why are you playing in a dead corporate NFL stadium? Mm-hmm. Uh, Woody says here this is a toss up I'll give the edge to South Carolina with the two and a half points only because they are hosting these two offenses will shred the opposing defenses in a shootout take the over even if it's 65 I don't even know what the over under is there Let's, let me quickly look that up here if I can f- find it it's 730 right yeah 730 where's that game at there it is the over under in this game jared is 64 and a half wow yeah you're right on there yeah 65 (laughs) yeah i i would take the over on that as well but you know don't real life gamble oh boy jared really picked this game here our next game here i also picked two thursday games if that tells you the options i had (laughs) Sunday, Sunday, Jared, noon on CBS, another Big Ten game on CBS. Northwestern and Rutgers. Yeah, buddy. I, I don't even know what to say about this, Jared. It's it's week one. And the the number of options I had for a power five team against the power five team was very limited. Oh. That's, so that's... Rutger, Rutgers is favored by six and a half points, Jared. But the big, bigger question here, though. Yeah. What do you think the over under is? Ooh. Oh, I actually what do you put it in is it's it's 40 and a half, which is. I, I love he has it in his answer. Take the under. <laughs> I'll take the under on that one. <laughs> I, but Kyle, I think you're missing the bigger picture here. There is a bigger picture. The loser of this game is probably the worst team in the Big Ten. Like, do you want to be the Indiana? Indiana may have something to say about that, though. I agree. They might. They might. They very well might. Uh, Indi- and I know Indiana will play Rutgers. I don't know if they play Northwestern or not, and don't look it up because I honestly don't care. But. We'll like I, I, th- this could be for the crown for the worst team in the Big Ten, and I think that there is something significant to that. Um, now, as far as the uh, as far as the spread goes, uh, I'm I'm just picking the underdog on this one. Both of these teams are bad. Um, like here, okay. L- let me let me put this as succinctly as I can possibly put this. All right, sure. Never pick Rutgers minus six and a half. <laughs> done you know i i do think you're rutgers not, you're wins this game i do think rutgers wins this game but i'm not i'm not picking rutgers minus six and a half you know you're not wrong 
but uh, I, I have something very similar to that. I, I have Northwestern to cover here, but yeah, it's it's going to be a low scoring game, even though Rutgers may look like they're in control here and definitely should win the game. It I think it's just going to look close <laughs> because it's going to be such a low scoring game. But yeah, I'll, I'll give Northwestern cover, but Rutgers will win. And I think it'll also be interesting to see just like who is Northwestern right now. When 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 you have the sort of off season that Northwestern had, mm-hmm. one of two things typically happens with a football team. They either are ripped to shreds from the inside and they're going to sleepwalk through the season just to get it over with, or they congeal and come together and, you know, maybe play above but because so many of these issues came from inside the locker room, I I don't a lot of times when you see a team deal with adversity and like I said, sort of do that come together hurrah sort of thing. That's normally when they're being acted on by outside forces. But this all happened internally, which makes me think that we're going to see a very, 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 very bad Northwestern this year. Yep. All right, and the last game, oh, nope, uh, Woody's pick here. Uh, he says this is the toughest game to figure. Uh, Rutgers should win the game, being at home, and Shiano being on in his fourth or fifth year against a program in chaos with an interim head coach. Yeah, But they have a junior college offensive line patched together with a young quarterback. Also so true. Take a, so take the under at 40 and a half, but take Northwestern and the six and a half. He has a Rutgers 19 to 17. I, th- I think that's, I think that's pretty apt. I think that's a, yes. I think that's a pretty solid uh, summation. All right. And the last game here, Jared, we have LSU and Florida state. This is the biggest game of the, of the weekend here, Sunday, seven 30 on ABC and fl- uh, excuse me, LSU is a two and a half point favorite in this game. Uh, this is one of your favorites, Jared. Here, it's in a neutral site uh, location here, but it's it's in Florida here. So you know, where in, Florida State? Where in Florida? It, uh, Orlando. Do we know that the game is happening? Spikes yes, is still me. Spikes is still in the chat. You, you, uh, Spikes, you're a Florida, you're a Florida man. Is this game happening as planned? Do you think so? I don't know. I see. I've seen a lot of predictions about the hurricane that's about that's coming in from the Gulf as all. Um, I see some people talking about um, it being like horrible and i see other people talking like it's totally overblown and i just don't know who is who's right in that situation um i think i think it'll play i think it'll play spike says it'll be gross so assuming that there is an it i I think that means that he thinks it's it's going to happen it's not as bad as previous ones yeah i saw one newscast here call it like um once in a lifetime storm and i'm just like okay chill like Ooh. no like this is not it's not it's not it's not it's chill <laughs> like it's not I, just, I hate hyperbole i think is all i'm gonna say about that so it's gonna go up the uh the panhandle up by if it's in tallahassee okay okay maybe maybe we'll talk a little bit more oh here, but okay and, and and granted, I'm not watching the storm super closely. I'm not. I have many um, hyper focuses in my life. Uh, Weather is not one of them. But the last I saw it was going like across the state more. So obviously the trajectory has changed since the last it, time I've looked at it. It always does. Yep. So either way, back to LSU, Florida State here. Uh, LSU a two and a half point favorite here. Uh, a lot of a lot of people really like this Florida State team. A lot of people like this LSU team too. And I think we'll may find out a lot about who each 
what each team is and if any of them is a pretender this year. I mean, kind of like what we we seen previous years where where it was like Alabama versus USC. USC come in and like, oh, are they are they really good this year? And Alabama just blows them out or whatever the case may be. Maybe we'll we'll find out if if Georgia, either team is is the real team here. Yeah, Georgia yeah. and Oregon. Comes Georgia to and mind. Oregon is another great great example as well. Here, I just I just really like LSU's defensive line. I, I think they they're going to play really nasty, and I think LSU is going to surprise a lot of not surprise, but I it would not surprise me if they would win the the SEC um, West division this year. It's, I, it's in I the realm of possibilities. I, I think I think they're that I think they're that talented, especially on that defensive side here. And they're they're gonna I think their defense will keep them in a lot of these games to to give LSU a chance to win. And I think they'll do the same here. So I'll I'll I'll, I'll take LSU to win and uh and to cover the two and a half points. Uh I'm gonna go LSU here. Um Florida State, and I, we talked about this extensively on Monday during our national preview episode. Um, Florida State is just Texas to me. They're an insanely talented football team, and but they just seem to disappoint every year. So I'll I'll believe I'll believe that Florida State is back when I see that Florida State is back. Uh, and uh, up until up until I open the box and find out if the cat is dead or not, in this case, I'm just going to assume that the cat's dead uh, until I see evidence. Otherwise. The cat's dead. Um, mm-hmm. uh, LSU, we know, can put together good football teams. Um, we've seen it. They know how to rise to the occasion and play in, in on a big stage. Florida State, we just we haven't seen that since Winston left. Yep, yep. All right, Woody here says a, a match worthy of a Sunday, maybe. I'll be pulling for Florida State, but with that, with that said, I think this game, more than most, will be one up front. So expect a battle. He has LSU winning thirty-four to twenty-nine with a drive to score in the final minute. So take LSU to cover. And I hope I'm ready. <laughs> there you go. Uh, we predicted, so that's six games. We did also predict the Ohio State Indiana game in more detail on our previous episode. So that's the seventh game. Go listen to that episode if you want to hear our thoughts on that. Um, Kyle, is uh, are there some questions you want to pick up? Um. Anything nothing, from the Discord server? Nothing in the um, related to the games. But we're talking about college um, game day here. Nomad asks. Um, I'm. I'm honestly just. I'm over. I. I'm just so over college game day. Where are they going? Mm-hmm. And same here. Who predicted what? And someone's gonna say something that's gonna get people mad. I'm just. I'm just so over it. Well, his question was a sub, is a subtraction of David Pollock an addition for college sports, and it, and and is the addition of Pat McMurf, McMurphy, Pat McAfee, a subtraction for college sports fans? The latter. Like, I'm not a David Pollock fan. Never was, but he was fine. Like, if you're putting together. What is supposed to be like one of the biggest studio shows in all of sports, which by ratings, so college game day at least was at one point, probably still is. It's like that. And is it the uh, TBS NBA show with Shaq and all them? Like those are the like those are the most watched pregame shows in athletics, right? Um, David Pollock was on a show surrounded by a lot of very talented, entertaining people. And he was just fine. Is how I feel about David Pollock. Um, Pat McAfee's a clown. 
Yeah, he's, he's he's just that annoying guy in the background that that tries to yell louder so people yeah. pay attention to him. Yeah, it's just like Yeah, it's just I'm right because I'm loud. I'm funny because I'm loud. I'm loud. Pay attention to me. And that's 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 who Pat McAfee is. Yep. All right. Um, I think I think that's it for for today here, Jared. Um, don't have any other don't have any other questions here. I'm just looking looking through our uh, our chat here, and I I think I think we're good here. All right. Um, as another reminder, uh, I encourage everyone to come join our Discord server. It's really the only social media platform either Kyle and I are active on anymore. Um, so if you want to. Talk to us, chat with us, can you come hang out with us. Like, I'm not saying I'm not trying to be like your only way to do that's the Discord server is like, but, but it's honestly, just at this point, the only way to do that's the Discord server. Um, I got real scared, Kyle, that it was going to click the leave button for a second. Um, <laughs> so it comes from the Discord server. Uh, we have a we have a bot in the Discord server that uh, allows us to pretend gamble with pretend coins no actual money on the lines but it's it's fun it's for bragging rights we also have the sloot picks all all of the games that we do on the show also are in our cbs sports pick them so you can pick along with us and compete along with us um if you think oh they suck i bet i could do better come prove it and by the way the bar is not that high you, you you might be able to to beat us we Kyle, if either of us ever like straight up won against in in the public sloop picks, I think we've come would, close, but I don't think we've I ever actually. Say I did. I want to say I did. Maybe the first or second year we did that. I doubt. Um, but we know it wasn't you. <laughs> no, it wasn't me. <laughs> um, it was. It wasn't me. The. The point being is that, like, if you think we suck and you can pick better, come join the Discord server where you can find the information to join the CBS Sports and then prove it. Prove it. That's all I'm going to say. Um, five new designs in our T-shirt store, Sloopcast. Uh, at Merch.thesloopcast.com. Merch.thesloopcast.com. There's a bunch of uh, non-Ohio State but maybe like legally speaking adjacent, but not Ohio state, but maybe just adjacent merch over at merch.sloopcast.com. Um, my lawyer is currently not in the chat, but I, I'm sure he would approve my phrasing there. You just, why, why did Siri decide that she needed to say something? Um, the, <laughs> you just got sued, Jared. Uh, the word they just get it taken down. They won't sue me. I don't. I don't make enough money for them to sue me. I don't make enough money to justify the salary of a lawyer writing a scary letter, let alone actually suing me. All right, Kyle. Um, anything, in Kyle's corner. Um, we're bad, we're bad podcasters because we didn't even mention this on Monday's episode. Um, uh, Hussey had a big boom last week. We didn't, we didn't they even did. mention that. Uh, Five you know, star. We, we, we hyper focus on recruiting during the wasteland. <laughs> and then like once the season starts, we just kind of hit the parachute and yeah. Yeah. So five star in case. People did not hear this over a week ago. Here you go. Five star <laughs> defensive lineman. Late breaking news. <laughs> Late breaking news. Five star defensive lineman Edric Houston uh, out of Georgia commits to the Ohio State University. Yes. yes and sir. LJ proving he still has it. And what was it? There was a, there was a video that was going around. Uh, he he he, um, either he called LJ or LJ called him, and he said, "When you said the, I just lost it." <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. 
Yeah. I, no, you know, it's. I, but he's been in the pocket for a long time, right? Like it feels disingenuous if I'm being honest, but uh, yeah, no, it's obviously a huge addition for Ohio state. Um, their first defensive end in the class. Um, they'll need another one or two. Um, but yeah, uh, they're slowly, but surely getting there on the defensive side. Um, the offensive recruiting class looks good. They need another offensive tackle. Um, so they need another offensive tackle. Um, they need another defensive end. They need another safety. Um, at least I, I think there's some other guys who they would like to get, who you would absolutely take onto the football team. Don't get me wrong. But if we're talking mm-hmm. like must haves, they need a dedicated offensive tackle in this class, a second dedicated offensive tackle in this class. They need a second safety. They need a second defensive end. Yep. yep. And I, I think that's it, Jared. I think that is it for our return of the sleep picks. Uh, feels good to be back. So uh, with all of that being said, tonight's ending band are once again, the raging Nathans. So, now, with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, the Raging Nathans. <laughs>